Hi, this is Jeff from Evans Performance Academy. Welcome to Megasquare Basics. In this video, we're going to be covering how to upload a calibration file, save our calibration file, as well as locate our calibration file in our projects folder. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into the video. When you get online with your controller, it's going to have the file that's on it is most likely going to be all generic values. Um, some files or some boxes that you get from DIY AutoTune, for example, if you buy a plug and play box, that may have the plug and play calibration file loaded on it already, which means when you plug into it, it has a file, if everything else is stock in your vehicle, that should start and run it. Now in this particular example, I am on a micro squirt. So it's a universal controller that can be used on most any kind of engine. And in this case, it's all generic settings in my actual calibration file. So what I'm gonna do here is go up to file, I'm gonna save this original file out of my Megasquirt box. I wanna have this as my original, and then any subsequent changes as I go through and uh, go and configure things, I can save those as different revisions or different file names, and I can always go back to my original file. So what I'm gonna do here is go to File, I'm gonna to go to Save As, and we can see, if we go here and expand this down a little bit, we're gonna be seeing that my directory here if we kind of go back through, we're going to be seeing under my uh, C drive users, Jeffrey Evans documents, Tuner Studio projects, my car, which that folder we saved to, is now going to go in here and be where all of our tunes or anything are going to be saving to. So right now we can see if I save this, it's going to show me the file name. It's going to be showing me the actual year, the month, the date, and then a timestamp here, .msq. This is going to be the file associated with this box right now. This is my original file. So we could leave the file name as this, or we could just go simply highlight in here and change this to original and leave it as that. I always suggest again that you save your original file. I cannot stress this enough. Um, you're gonna have something you can default back to as you go through and make all your different changes. Um, and you're gonna be having that, that original in case something goes wrong along the way um, you can load that file back up. So I'm going to click Save right now, and I've saved that file. Now, if I want to load a file, let's say I had several files in that actual folder for my project called My Car, then I would simply go here to File, and then I'd go Load Tune, and it's going to allow me to go into my project that's open right now of My Car. We can see that the original file here is available. We don't see any other file types because I haven't saved anything. I'm going to go here and click Open and it's gonna ask me, would you like to send and burn configuration to the controller? Now, sending it to the controller is one thing. Burning it actually makes it permanent on the actual controller. So we're gonna be seeing this burn option as we do our tuning. We always make sure after we've made some changes that we use the burn option so it burns it or saves it onto the box. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna do this, and it's gonna tell me the current settings will be replaced by the settings in original.msq. So what it's telling me is it's gonna overwrite everything in here based on this file. So again, I'm loading, I've saved the file, I'm just gonna load it back to my box. At this point, I'm just trying to illustrate the process of going in and working, saving, and then uploading our calibration file. So I'm gonna say yes at this point, and we're gonna go ahead and let it upload that particular file. So now it has done that, and it's ready to go. So the process is pretty simple. If you're ever stuck, and you're trying to seek assistance from uh, somebody that's trying to give you support with the Megascore product. So whether it's gonna be a DIY Autotune uh, or another individual that is going to help you out um, with doing some troubleshooting or reviewing your calibration file, you wanna make sure that you know where that particular folder is when you're going in and you're doing your save function or you're trying to go ahead and work with this file. So if I jump out of here, I jump into my actual folder section here I'm gonna be patient and uh, let it open. I'm gonna to go to Documents, I'm gonna double click this. I can see that that Tuner Studio Projects here folder is located right here. If I double click this, we can see now these other generic examples and then My Car. If we double click this, we're gonna be seeing here we have these other folders in that folder and we're gonna be seeing this original file as what we want to access. Now, we would simply take this file here, attach it to an email and we were able to email it to uh, support if you're having a problem or to your friend or uh, you know whatever the situation may be where you'd wanna take that tune file and be able to share it with someone else, um, you would simply go to the directory and find this particular file. Now, as you go along, you're gonna have several different files in here and doing your tuning process. So one way we can kind of keep track of what's going on 
under the date modified here, we can see the actual date and timestamp. That's going to give us an indication of what's going on along with the actual file name. Now, I typically go and save my files in logical values. So normally, after I've saved my original, I'll leave the time stamping, the, the year, date, and time stamping onto the file because as I'm going back to my folder here, it makes a lot more sense. Um, we can see exactly in the file name what it's associated with. Um, so that's going to make going back in and referencing the file if we want to go and uh, send it to someone or we want to share the file we can go back to that particular date we did the tune on and that particular time and uh, we can grab that file and then email it out. Um, so that's gonna wrap up right now. It's pretty straightforward to get online with our Megascore controller and we're gonna be taking a look at using some more of these basic functionalities now we've gotten live with the software in our next video. Okay, so that wraps up our video. Make sure you check out all the videos we have in our Megasquirt's basic course. Now, if you wanna learn beyond the basics, you wanna learn how to tune with your Megasquirt, check out evansperformanceacademy.vhxtv. That's gonna be where we have our Megasquirt training course. It's gonna be going over all the details you need to know in order to properly tune your Megasquirt, as well as many other engine management systems. So hopefully you check that out, and I'll be able to see you guys in class.